Okay, now for Mrs. Hewson's lodger, remember? The guy who did all that negotiating? Benjamin Franklin, who does his best negotiating for the American government after the War of Independence, and, as a result, spends most of his time crisscrossing the Atlantic. The other thing Franklin gets up to with all these transatlantic crossings is find out you can get across the Atlantic faster if you get your ship onto a mysterious current moving east across the ocean. And you know you're on this current because its water is warmer than the surrounding sea. So Franklin uses all his voyages to check up on the current by gradually taking the temperature of the water all the way across from America to Great Britain. Point of it all being, if he can map the current well enough for sailors to use it regularly, it'll save time and money. He does, and it does, to this day. We call the current Franklin charts the Gulf Stream. Franklin's work kind of kicks off modern oceanography, and strangely enough, all because of yet another example of how stealing things can change history. Not by Franklin, of course. I'm talking about the thermometer he uses, the idea for which is snitched by its so-called inventor, the famous Dutch instrument maker, Gabriel Fahrenheit. Seventeen fourteen in Amsterdam, Fahrenheit produces his thermometer. Great news for all. Especially hypochondriacs. Phew, that's a relief. 98.4. So that's OK. Ah, now, where was I? Oh, yeah, Fahrenheit. Now, the reason Fahrenheit's thermometer is such a boffo success is because back in the 18th century, finding out what the temperature is is not what you'd call an exact science. In fact, you could say they're all working in the dark. Fahrenheit clears up the confusion, created by everybody doing it a different way, with different scales on their instruments, so temperature is a matter of anybody's guess. Now, to start with, the way Fahrenheit makes his thermometer is nothing new. You just melt the end of a glass rod with a hole down the middle, and then blow down the hole to make the molten blob on the end expand into what will become the thermometer bulb that contains the mercury. Getting the mercury into the bulb's really nifty. Watch. You put the hot rod bulb up into the mercury, and the vacuum you made in there with the heat sucks the mercury up into the bulb. OK, now for the absolutely lunatic way Fahrenheit comes up with a Fahrenheit scale, so hang in there. He starts with a scale, the bottom end of which is going to be the temperature of frozen ice, zero. He calls boiling water 60. One eighth and three eighths up the scale are freezing water and the temperature of a healthy armpit. Are you still with me? OK, make each degree four degrees, which turns freezing water from seven and a half to 30 and a healthy armpit to 90, but doesn't divide by eight. So make 30, 32 and 90, 96 and there you are, plus one last tweak. Clear as mud? I never said what Fahrenheit did would make any sense. Well, there's one thing I can explain, that armpit number. Remember I said he snitched the whole idea? In 1708, Fahrenheit visits Copenhagen and meets the ex-mayor of the city, one of those talented scientific amateurs the place is full of back then. Guy by the name of Ole Roma. Never heard of him? Thank Fahrenheit for that. See, the whole thermometer thing is Roma's idea, so is the armpit number, and all the basic research. Fahrenheit kind of just turns up, takes notes of early Roma's notes, and then nips back down south to Amsterdam. Not long after which, only Roma's notes get destroyed in a terrible fire. Not long after which, it's only who? End of that sad tale. Once upon a time, against all the odds, Something will happen that could be the reason you're alive today. Thanks to the way chance works. Or, as they say here, thanks to the big spin.
I suppose if you were ever going to stake your life, you'd bet on a doctor, wouldn't you? I mean, when the chips are down, nothing matters more than your health, does it? Nothing to gamble with, is it? Funnily enough, the greatest medical discovery of all time started in a casino. In World War I, converted to a British Army field hospital in France, which is ironic because if you had known how this medical thing was going to turn out, you would have never have bet on it in a million years. Because the odds against all the pieces falling together the way they did were a thousand to one. Still, that's history. Well, this next bit is. Okay, it's summer in England. The war is over, and this is the problem. Wounded troops are being delivered back home in critical condition because of the useless antibiotics they were given in France. So when one of the doctors in that casino I mentioned comes home with the ambulance teams, he goes into antibiotics. Now, this guy is famous for chaos. And one day in 1928, in the summer, he comes back from his holidays and there's his usual pile of unspeakable bacteria dishes where he left them, in the sink, half covered by antiseptic liquid. So, he idly picks one up and sees nothing. Well, some mold, something blown in from the street. So far, so what? And then he sees this a zone of dead bacteria around the mold killed by the mold okay this is what i meant by a thousand to one first off this was one of the few dishes that hadn't slipped into the antiseptic liquid and then of all of them this was the one he picked up and then he'd left the window open for the bug to get in from the street and then the bacteria and the mold grow at different temperatures cool for the mold and hot for the bacteria And that's exactly what the London weather did for the right number of days in the right sequence for this to happen. Without which emergencies would be emergency emergencies. Because this is penicillin. All thanks to Alexander Fleming's untidiness.